In this video, we'll talk about switch statement. Now to understand switch statement, we have to go for an example. So if you go back to your code, what we have here is let's say we have an integer value and the value of n is one. Now the value of n could be from one to seven and might be you have guessed it. So when I say one to seven, it might be the number of days and you're right. So basically what I want here is if the value of n is one, I want to print Monday. If the value of uh, n is two, I want to print Tuesday. So based on the value of n, which can be from one to seven, I want to print the day of the week. How do we do it? So of course you can just simply print the values, right? You can say, hey, I want to print Sunday and you can just uh, copy paste it or maybe copy pasting is not the right word. You can say uh, code reuse. So just ignore this X here, it's just, just, just a suggestion given by the VS code. Uh, we can say this is Monday and we can just paste it multiple times. So this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. You know what? I want to keep Sunday as a last day because that's what we say, right? Weekend, the Monday, the weekday should start from Monday. Okay. So I want to print this based on the value of N. At this point, if you just uh, run this, it will print, it will print, uh, all the values. I don't want to print all the values. I just want to print uh, one day based on the value of n. So of course you can do one thing. You can just check with the help of if else. You can check if the value of n is one, you can just print uh, Monday. If the value of n is, let's say, you can say else if here. If the value of n is two, in that case, I can print uh, Tuesday, right? We can do that. At least let's do between Monday and Tuesday because that's what you are putting into if else. And if you run this code with that changes, you can see it is printing Monday. It is not printing Tuesday because Tuesday is in if else. And you can apply that in all the conditions here, and all the statements. You can simply put if else and you can check for n is equal to equal to three and then list goes on, right? This is one way. There's another way using which you can do this. In fact, you know what I can do? I can just simply complete this uh, code. And here it should be three, four, five, six. You know, for seven, it actually makes sense to not even mention the condition because if none of it is matching, of course it will be Sunday, right? Uh, so if there's no office, that's Sunday, okay? So uh, basically this is what we can do here. Uh, but don't you think there should be a good way or a better way of doing this? So instead of doing if else everywhere and at the end of else, we have a good way, which is called a switch. Now what switch will do? Example, when we talk about switch, it will switch between the ports, right? Uh, example, in networking concept as well, we use something called switch. So here, what you can do is, we can use a switch. Now based on a value, it will execute a particular case. And that's why most of the time we say it's a switch case statement. Okay, just follow me. So what I can do is instead of using this if else, I can simply rewrite everything in a switch block. I can say switch, switch. And in this switch, you can pass the value, which is n in this case, and then you can write everything in this block. Okay, how do we mention that in this block? I have written capital switch, my bad. What you can do is you can put all this thing inside this block. The only change is instead of saying if, we, we don't for the condition, we don't for the check from the condition, we just match, we try to match the case. It can be something like this. We can say case one, colon. So whatever value you have passed, if this is matching with the case, example, if n is matching with a one, it will execute this statement. Same applies here. In fact, you know, I just want to give a tab to everything else. Uh, and then here, I can just say case two for this. And let me just complete this thing for all. Okay, and then of course the number has to be changed. So we can say this is three, this is four, uh, this is five, this is six, and this is seven, okay? So we are trying to match with all the cases. What I will do is I will start with seven and let's see what happens. The moment you make it seven, we are basically trying to match the cases. So what happens is when you execute this, it will go to the switch statement and switch says, okay, I got the value which is seven. And now with this seven, I'll try to match with all the cases here. So it will check. If the value which is passed, which is seven, is it matching with one? No, it will not execute the block. Is it matching with two? No, is it matching with three? No, list goes on, it goes on, it matches with seven. The moment it matches, it will execute the statement. We just print Sunday. 
and it will do that. So if you run this code, example, if I compile this and run, you can see we got Sunday. Simple stuff, right? And this one looks much better than the if else because we are checking for the condition multiple time. Here, we are matching the case, okay? So this looks better, right? And it also works better compared to if else. But there's only, there's only one issue here. The issue is, what if the value of n is two? Now, what do you think the output would be? Think about this. And maybe in your mind, you already have an answer. So what I will do is I will just compile this code and run this code. Oh, that's weird. We were expecting Tuesday, but we got all the values. The reason is when the moment your switch case matches with a case, example, it will check, do, is it matching with one? No, it will not execute this block. Is it matching with two? Yes. The moment it matches the case, it will execute the block for sure. And it will just try to complete the entire switch statement. It will execute all the cases. It will not try to match again because it's already matched. Oh, that's an issue, right? So what I want is I can simply ask my switch, hey, you know, once you match with one of the case, just come out of the switch block. And the way you can do that is by using a special keyword called break. Now break is very important because this will be used multiple times for different concept. What we are doing with break here is it says simply come out of the block. Now, once you match with any of the case, just come out. And of course, for that, you have to put break in all the cases. I will just copy this. I will try to reuse the code here and paste it everywhere. Okay. Now, what we are doing is the moment it matches with the case, it will jump out. Let's try this now. Compile, run. You can see we got Tuesday. It is not printing all the other blocks because the moment you print Tuesday, it will simply jump out because we are saying break. That looks cool, right? Now, now there's one more important thing. See, for the last case, we are still checking, right? Or maybe we can have one more case. What if the value is eight? It's not even coming in any of the case here. In that case, what you can do is you can do something called default case. If none of the cases are matching, you can do default and you can print enter a valid number. I mean, you can print any statement you want. I'm just saying enter the valid, valid number and you can see the value here is eight. So it should print enter the value valid number. And that's what you got, enter the value valid number. So this is how basically you can use this switch statement. Now with the recent versions of Java, you can actually avoid using break. There's a different syntax we can use, but again, that we'll see in a separate video of advanced Java concept where new concept has been introduced in new versions. Right. But at this point, this perfectly works. And in most of the companies, they are still into Java 8. So let's stick with this syntax. So try it out with different examples and uh, you will be good to go.